projects may have seemed like a good idea on paper, but unfortunately things didn't work out as planned. Whether due to economic woes or unexpected events, these are the top 15 biggest mega projects that were never finished. Number 15, Ryugong Hotel. If you're booking a hotel for your next vacation, then your first choice probably wouldn't be the one nicknamed the Hotel of Doom, even if it is listed in the Guinness Book of Records as the tallest unoccupied building in the world. On the other hand, there's no chance at all that you'd be taking your vacation in North Korea, so it's not a problem you'll ever have to worry about. The Ryugyong Hotel is a bit of a curiosity, not least because North Korea isn't exactly known for welcoming outsiders, and so the choice to build a hotel seems strange at the very least. This hotel, however, was basically built as a snub to South Korea, who just built a hotel in Singapore, which turned out to be the tallest one in the world. And so, in 1987, powered by a combination of Soviet money and pure envy, construction began on this massive pyramid-like structure. Standing at 330 meters, the Ryugyong Hotel would have contained three wings and five revolving restaurants with panoramic views of Pyongyang. But by 1991, however, the Soviet Union was no more. The money dried up, and in 1992, everything stopped. Well, for the next 16 years, at least. In 2008, an Egyptian company spent $180 million trying to revive the hotel, but that too came to a grinding halt. And today it's mainly used for North Korean history exhibitions, with messages from the government displayed on the outside. Given the money required, along with the fact that North Korea is a very poor country, it seems unlikely that the hotel will ever be completed. Which is a shame if a nice relaxing holiday in Pyongyang is on your bucket list. Number 14. Superconducting Super Collider Most people have heard of the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, but did you know there were plans for a similar project in Texas in the United States? Or that the tunnels that were dug out for it still exist like some empty haunted underground maze? The Superconducting Super Collider, which has also been nicknamed the Desertron, was said to be the world's longest and most powerful particle smashing device of its kind, with a circumference of 54 miles and an energy of 20 TeV per proton. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but I'm sure any fans of quantum physics watching this video will be happy to flex their impressive brains. Let us know in the comments. Sadly, however, despite all the sexy-sounding quantum physics jargon, this project was ultimately not to be. In October 1993, after 17 shafts were sunk, 14 and a half miles of tunnel had been bored, and over $2 billion had been spent, the House of Representatives rejected further funding, and President Bill Clinton signed a bill which officially canceled the project. Various reasons were given for the sudden lack of interest in the SSC, including rising costs and poor management. But it's believed that with the end of the Cold War, the government no longer felt the need to prove how superior American science was to its Soviet counterpart. In other words, the secrets of the universe are clearly far less important than being able to show off to your neighbors. Number 13. Golden Finance 117 this unfinished 128-story skyscraper in Tianjin in China was designed to resemble a walking stick, which is ironic, really, because its designers will probably all need walking sticks by the time it's completed. Well, if it's ever completed. Golden Finance 117, also known as China 117 Tower, stands at a height of 596 meters, or about 2,000 feet, and first started making its way towards the clouds in 2008, when the plan was for it to be the tallest flat-roofed building in the world. Since then, however, the building has been beset by more problems than a millipede has legs. Work on the skyscraper was paused in January 2010 due to financial issues caused by the Great Recession, only to be started again in 2011. But by 2015, however, just as the building was topped out, the China State Construction Engineering Corporation removed all on-site workers and have left it in an unfinished state ever since. It doesn't seem like any steps are being taken to get things moving again, so maybe the developers won't need walking sticks after all. Maybe they'll need to be cryogenically frozen and revived again at some point in the distant future. These days, the only people who venture inside are urban explorers, such as the Russian couple Ivan Birkis and Angela Nikolaou, whose 2016 video of them climbing the tower received over 880,000 views. Oh well, at least it's being used for something. Number 12. London Garden Bridge 
This project was originally suggested by actress Joanna Lumley. And if you're not familiar with Lumley's work, she's possibly best known for the sitcom Absolutely Famous, where she played the alcoholic drug addicted character Patsy. And on that basis, the government clearly thought it would be a great idea to take her suggestion on board and start looking into ways they could find hundreds of millions of pounds to fund this random idea. The London Garden Bridge was supposed to span the River Thames between the Waterloo and Blackfriars Bridges, and it was intended for pedestrians only, due to the many trees, bushes, and other kinds of greenery that would have been planted along the way. It was basically supposed to be a little oasis for busy Londoners who could spend a few minutes fooling themselves that they were in the middle of a forest before subsequently forcing themselves onto a tube train and feeling like cattle on their way to an abattoir. The plan was to raise 140 million pounds of private money and 60 million pounds of public money. But in 2017, a report concluded that if construction were to go ahead, costs would exceed 200 million pounds. And that's before annual maintenance costs were even considered. It wasn't long afterwards that the Garden Bridge Trust announced that they would be ending the project, no doubt annoying a lot of people, not the least of which was Joanne Alumni. Despite never going ahead, the failed project cost 53 million pounds, of which 43 million was straight from the public purse. And as you can imagine, the public wasn't exactly thrilled about this, specifically those who didn't even live in London. Number 11, Tiandong Cheng, China. If you're ever in China and a fellow tourist asks you for directions to the Eiffel Tower, then please don't worry. They're not completely and utterly insane. In 2007, developers decided to create a replica of Paris in Tiandong Cheng, China, including a variety of Paris landmarks such as the Gardens of Versailles and an Eiffel Tower about one-third the size of the real thing. But this wasn't simply a Parisian theme park, oh no. This place was designed for people to live there, approximately 10,000 of them. Well, these days, however, Tiandong Cheng is known as a ghost town, with only around 2,000 people living in the area, which might seem like a fair amount until you consider the size of this place. It's like a couple of mice having an entire hotel to themselves. This fake Paris never really lived up to its early potential. Of course, as you can tell from the way it looks like the aftermath of a zombie apocalypse, but nobody's ever going to really put their finger on why this happened. Could it be possibly that its countryside location was just far too difficult to reach, or was it simply because the people of China aren't traditionally very keen on snails, cheese, and baguettes? It's a mystery. Number 10. San Francisco Shipyard Of all the places to buy yourself a property and probably raise a family, a former nuclear test site probably wouldn't be the top of your list. Even so, that didn't stop developers from trying to turn this site in San Francisco's Hunter's Point neighborhood into an $8 billion residential mega-project. The idea was not only to have beautiful, affordable homes with a view of the bay, but also restaurants, bars, and a variety of other amenities in a stunning location. But there was just one tiny problem with that. Nuclear waste. And when it comes to things you don't want to live near, nuclear waste is probably right at the top of the list. So, yes, there was a bit of an oops moment for the developers when the first residents started moving in during 2015, and reports found that land near the condos might still be contaminated with toxic materials. This was apparently the fault of the cleanup guys, who clearly didn't take their job descriptions literally enough, and so, needless to say, there were a lot of lawsuits flying around afterwards from residents claiming they'd been exposed to things that could cause health problems. These days, the city of San Francisco has refused any further development on the site, which is probably for the best if you don't want a new breed of San Francisco-based mutant on your hands. Number 9. Harmon Tower, Las Vegas If you want to lose your money, then Vegas is usually the best place to go, although most of us would probably lose it on the betting tables rather than trying to build a massive 49-story hotel and then simply demolishing it again. This was the work of MGM Mirage, who planned to add this tower to the Vegas Strip as part of their $8.5 billion city center complex. Approximately $275 million were spent on building 26 floors of the Harmon Tower until 2008 when the inspectors said that the steel used would be unable to support the remaining floors. And so in 2014, after much time in court, demolition began before an earthquake could do the job for them. The demolition cost over $11 million, so it was essentially a very good way of flushing your money down the toilet. But once again, if you're going to flush your money away, then the Vegas Strip is the best place to do it. Is it just me, or is this the very definition of poetic irony? 
Number eight, Palace of the Soviets, Moscow. We're gonna take a step back in time for this next entry. Had it been completed in the 1930s or 40s as planned, then the Palace of the Soviets would have been the world's largest structure. At 416 meters, or about 1,365 feet tall, its interior would have been able to contain six of the tallest American skyscrapers, and its grand hall alone would have seated over 20,000 people. And that's one serious catering bill if you ever fancy inviting people over for dinner. The striking design of stacked cylinders topped off with a 100-meter statue of Lenin would certainly have been head-turning, but sadly, it was not to be. Construction started in 1933, with the foundations being completed in 39, just in time for World War II to break out. What wonderful timing. It goes without saying that when the Germans invaded in 1941, the project was well and truly destroyed, with engineers and workers pressed into service elsewhere and the steel used for other, more war-based things, like fortifications and bridges. After World War II, Joseph Stalin lost interest in the palace, and that was that. But then it's a busy life when you're a dictator. You have to be a multitasker. Number seven, China's Yujiapu. As you can tell, China has a bit of a monopoly when it comes to ghost towns. The next entry on our list was a proposed financial center, supposedly modeled after Manhattan, but presumably without the massive M&M shop in Times Square. There were even plans for a Lincoln Center spinoff and an institute that would be partnered with the Juilliard School. It sounds good, doesn't it? But you know what happens to projects on this list, so please don't get too excited. Construction on the $30 billion project started in 2009, with plans including high-rise buildings, open spaces, and a high-speed train to Beijing. But these days it's described as a failure before it even started. And that's not a great description, really, is it? It's certainly not the kind of thing you'd want on your school report. Construction eventually came to a halt in 2014, with many buildings either abandoned or only partly occupied or still under construction. So while it might look like certain dilapidated parts of New York, it's a world away from midtown Manhattan. Number six, development of Rio's Olympic Park. The 2016 Olympic Games cost Rio de Janeiro about $13 billion. There was the construction of the venues, a new subway line, renovation to the port, and the Olympic Village itself, of course, which came in at around $700 million. And so what better way to make some of that money back by converting it into a collection of luxury condos, which could be auctioned to private owners? Unfortunately, this plan had the word nope written all over it. You see, the Olympic Park is now considered a health hazard. In fact, when the condos went to auction, it's rumored that only one of them was sold, which, let's be honest, it's not a great endorsement. By 2017, they'd only managed to get rid of 7% of them, so it's clearly not even a desirable location for the average property buyer, never mind those who can afford a bit of luxury. Today, the site is pretty much abandoned and edging towards ghost town territory, although at least the ghosts will be able to keep themselves fit given all the old sports equipment on offer. Number five, Keystone XL Pipeline, US and Canada. Politics and politicians have a way of making construction projects grind to a halt, and the expansion to the Keystone Pipeline system, the Keystone XL, is certainly no exception. The pipeline has transported oil from Alberta to Illinois and Texas since 2010, but this expansion, which would run from Alberta to Nebraska, has been a political football for quite some time. It was vetoed by President Obama, then given the go-ahead by his successor, Donald Trump, only for Joe Biden to revoke the permit a few hours after his inauguration. The project was set to cost around $8 billion, but given the old on-again, off-again nature of its history, who knows what the future might hold. Number four, full border wall between the US and Mexico. Ah, the wall. How could anyone who watched Donald Trump's election campaign ever forget about the wall? One of Trump's election promises was to extend the U.S.-Mexico border boundary to cover 1,000 miles as part of his immigration crackdown. Not only that, but he decided that Mexico was going to take care of the bill. Needless to say, the Mexican government responded to this by metaphorically raising their collective middle fingers and not giving him a single solitary penny, which certainly didn't help the project become any less of a disaster. By the time Trump left office, the wall had only been extended by 47 miles, but even that had cost a hefty $15 billion, and it looks like it won't be expanding beyond that anytime soon. Well, not if Joe Biden's pledge to not construct another foot of wall is anything to go by. Number three, 
Doha-shaped crossing. They call football the beautiful game, but there was nothing beautiful about the response to Qatar winning the right to hold the 2022 FIFA World Cup. The whole thing had more than a touch of controversy to it, with allegations of bribery and inquiry being launched and several prominent FIFA officials being fired or forced to resign. Nevertheless, this didn't stop Qatar making plans for the event, including the massive mess-up which is next on our list. Plans for the Doha Sharf crossing were first unveiled in 2013 and were slightly overambitious to say the least. The 12 kilometer long crossing would consist of three bridges connected by underwater tunnels, which would have a capacity for 6,000 vehicles per hour. In order to deal with the high volume of traffic between the international airport and the Bay Area, the project was expected to cost $12 billion, but a couple of years later, due to low oil prices and an overburdened construction sector, the government called a halt to all non-essential mega-projects, including this magnificent crossing. The project has since been revisited, with plans to restart construction in 2021, but even the project will take around four years to complete, not exactly in time for the 2022 World Cup. Maybe a time machine would be easier. Number two the World Islands, Dubai. These man-made archipelagos in Dubai are a familiar sight to anyone who's ever flipped through a luxury holiday brochure or seen adverts for stupidly expensive beach holidays. Construction on the Palm Islands, which are possibly the most famous of the archipelago, started in the early 2000s, but it was soon joined by two other projects in a similar vein, the world and the universe. All three of these projects have had their issues, but it's the world that's made our list due to the plethora of problems that have beset it over the years. The world is a group of 300 islands forming a map of the world and adding 232 kilometers of coastline to Dubai. But after almost two decades of work, it's still yet to be finished. There have been issues of debt, legal problem, and perhaps most catastrophic of all, many of the islands are sinking back into the sea. That's right. This project has had more than a little in common with the Titanic. The project developer, Nakil, completely denied the suggestion that the archipelago was heading back into the seabed, although this was despite photographic evidence taken by the International Space Station, and let's be honest, if anyone's got a good view of the islands, then it's those guys. Number 1. Shengyung International Project you could call this place a ghost town, but even ghosts would probably get lonely and freaked out living in a town like this. The Zhongyong International Project in Shijiazhuang, Hebei Province, China, was originally designed as a residential community for those who could afford high-end living. You know the kind of place. The kids go to private school, there are several expensive cars parked in the driveway, you get sneered at if you don't have the right kind of accent, and this place was designed to be no different. The brainchild of Hebei Real Estate Development Group, this 1,300-acre development was supposed to be split into two distinct parts, a residential district featuring classy European-style buildings and modern skyscrapers, and an entertainment district containing shopping malls, parking lots, and even a massive water-based theme park. In 2017, however, the developer was put under investigation for corruption, property prices plummeted, and the company declared bankruptcy project was seized by local authorities and the 700 people who had already bought property were no longer allowed to move in. These days, despite the easy access by road and rail, the only inhabitants in this place are the stray animals that wander the streets, no doubt wondering where all their two-legged counterparts have gone. That said, although the place is slowly but surely deteriorating, it's become a landmark for tourists eager to get a selfie in this strange and eerie environment. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.